I'm so comfortable in the water and, and everything is so amazing and enjoyable and, and then you get on land and you're like, oh, I can do an interview? <laughs> Well, the one person that really stands out in my mind was uh, Sean Thompson, and he was the best surfer. He wasn't my favorite by any means. I was Hawaii, he was South Africa. <laughs> but he would come to our local beach and he would give us shorts, and he was the only guy that stuck out on my mind because he was so awesome. He would come and he'd give us shorts. I do think about that at times when I'm going around and there's a bunch of kids and, and I have somewhere else I'm supposed to be going, but I go, okay, no, forget, just stay here and, and get the kids something to attach to, get, you know, work with them or talk to them or help them with their life. Yeah, I like going to talk to kids, that's my favorite, going to schools, talking to them about the living your life purpose, living what you're passionate about. And a lot of it comes from my childhood probably, yeah, I would say yes. keep surfing. That was my dream. I was in a store working, my own store, not fun, driving by perfect waves, going to work, and this isn't my passion, this isn't what I'm meant to be doing. So, and I wrote my go out, okay, give surfing one more chance. I was about to retire. So I wrote keep surfing and I made my map. And I pretty much achieved all my goals and dreams as far as my career go. Now, my goal and my dream is to help my friends achieve what they want in life and get to where they're comfortable in life, to where they can surf or hang out with their family. So you have to focus, make your plan, and in that plan is how do you live comfortably and do what you want, and I pretty much achieved all that for myself. The only thing that enters my thought process of not surfing big waves or small waves is when I have pain. As long as I have no pain, then there's no limit. There's no age that's too old. Uh, right now, my body's perfect, and I can keep going. Most of my friends are running around in pain. I'm not, a, I'm not into pain. Bikram yoga is what I really like because it's strength and stretch and you sweat like crazy. And our house is right over here, so we'll walk up this, run, and then run the stairs, and yoga, and some rubber bands. Some, I have a little uh, program that I put together that I do in the morning, and um, a lot of visualizing. Well, when we first sent the photo, there's this little car and the giant wave in the background, it looked amazing. It looked like my favorite wave called Jaws on Oahu, but I had no idea what the coastline was like. And they said, oh, it's a little fishing village. And so I figured 10, 20 houses in this little fishing village. And, and the, all I'm asking is, is there jet skis? Oh yeah, there's jet skis an hour away in Lisbon. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I was real, I had no expectations, which was amazing. And it was the biggest wave I ever saw. And I knew that I found the biggest waves I've ever seen and that we have something really special here, but I hadn't gotten in the water to solidify what I thought of. The holy grail, big waves, yay. Then they brought me, they showed me the wave and they brought me down to the harbor and they, and I had played a joke on them. I told them, oh yeah, we missed our plane. And, and so they were kind of like, okay, we're gonna get him back now. And so we drove up to the harbor and they brought me over to these jet skis and they're like, yeah, there's your skis. I'm like, and they're wasted, old skis. And they, they, I'm like, okay, if the engines are good and the impellers are good, maybe we can do this. And I go and I'm looking in the, and there's no engine. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a prankster and people don't prank on me. And if they do, I, I fall. <laughs> I didn't want to surf the day of the world record wave. I'd surfed all day the day before and I got pounded by so many waves and I was really tired and, and I never feel like that. I'm always revving for the next, and they, they came to my door knocking, come on, I'm like, no, I'm good. And then they talked me into going, I was just gonna drive them. And then they said, come on, get a wave, and I didn't feel right. But then I did my little breathing thing, reset, and all of a sudden he picked me up in the rope and, and there was the world record wave. It was, it was magic. I focused on it, I trained hard, I ate perfect, I surrounded myself with the right people, I created an amazing team, got everything set up here in Nazareth for, 
for your whole year, actually two years, the second year it came. And um, it was a lot of work, but it was well worth it. And it takes about two or three years for people to, you know, 2011 we got the world record and it went on BBC and CNN. 2012, BBC, CNN. 2013, BBC, CNN. And then all three years in a row, all, they're, they're changing their tickets, they're, they're making new plans, and everybody's coming to Portugal, and it's, 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 it's amazing. It's unbelievable. Well, first, it started out with a really tight little group of really good friends, and we became like family with a few people from uh, the City Hall that believed in the project and got me here. It went from that to this whole town watching me go in the water and hearing about this crazy American that's going to the water and they're all like, oh, he's gonna die, oh, he's gonna die. That sea is a place of death, that's all they know. People are running around in black because their loved ones have passed in the sea here. And then by the third year, all of a sudden, you know, we made more friends in the town and we, we we became very close with people, and Nazare has become our home and our family. Um, like when you think of family and you think of how you would envision your family being at its best, that's what Nazare is for us, like the dream family. It, it's amazing. Like even if I've dreamt of how my own little town or my country would have received me at my best, this exceeds all anywhere in Portugal and it's just the most amazing warmth and acceptance and the, the coolest thing and it's really like brings me to tears at times is you can have some like 80 year old guy in the middle of nowhere and he'll come on McNamara thank you so much for what you've done for my country and I'm like I, it, I didn't once it, my, I didn't really put it together, what they, and my wife kind of explained it all, and I'm just a surfer, you know, I don't think too much, you know, run around with my heart, and, and she's like, yeah, they're, ha they're happy of you bringing attention to the country. I'm just like, wow, this happens everywhere I go. Like other surfers from their country or from wherever they are, people don't go up and say thank you for what you do in my country, because they're just going around surfing and winning prize money and not really doing anything for their country. And um, here in Portugal, People are so proud of their town, so proud of their food, so proud of everything that they have in their little village. And that goes from village to village to village, from region to region. And it's so amazing to, to uh, feel so much love and acceptance and, and um, appreciation. The board was made for survival. We got, were so lucky, Mercedes came to me and said, Garrett, we don't want to just be on the beach. We want to get in the water with you. The star is air, land, sea. We want to get back in the water with you. It's not a, a board building endeavor. It's uh, not a one-off. Anybody who needs a really good board, I'm, I'm going to, and surfing here, I'll, I'm going to debate with, you know, let them ride them or not. And, um, the, the one thing with the boards is doing charity events and raising money for certain charities through the boards, selling them and send a day and signature and hang out and get some real money from a few of the boards. And uh, the other endeavor, which is most amazing, is working with Amorim Cork. And um, they make the nose cone this, for the NASA space shuttle, is cork, their cork. And they make four billion corks a year. and and it's a sustainable product, 100% sustainable. And their facility that they're in, their, their newest facility, is 99% self-sufficient from the cork itself. So it's the most amazing sustainable product, and the facility is sustainable. And we're working on making stringers for the surfboards so we never have to cut down another tree. Because in every surfboard is a little piece of a tree and Redwood is one of the most sought after stringers and they, it's expensive and hard to come by and so not too many Redwood stringers and then they're using spruce and all these different woods but we're cutting down trees to make surfboards so we want to make a cork stringer and we're working on a mixture of cork with another product to make a stiff and strong enough stringer 
that will replace the wood. I have some ones for paddling that with the stringer and then I have 100% cork boards for the giant waves and then um, I'll actually be riding the boards all over the world. So anywhere I go, we'll be testing the stringers and, and working on the perfect stringer. I love working with wood and I love technology and I love utilizing technology. Like some surfaces are so pure and I don't want a jet ski in the water and I don't want a pull suit, but I, I really want to come home whenever I go out there. So I utilize technology and I love working with new products, like I said, and, and I love working with wood. So I, I see myself more of a woodworker, making fun things in my big wood shop at home someday when I'm 92. I'm a perfectionist also, like, and I like to micromanage, so it's challenging for me to get into anything because then my brain gets in the way of my heart and I gotta make all these decisions and it's gotta be perfect, it's gotta be right. So I try to do my best to stay away from that type of stuff unless it's for the environment. It's important for I think for survival, um, when you're going out there, not for the love of it, going out there for ulterior motives for your sponsor or to win an award, you're, you're not actually just going out there because you want to, you're going out there because you think you have to or, or there's your ego. Then you end up um, getting yourself in trouble and maybe getting the, the ones around you in trouble as well. Survival and success depends on your attitude going into the water. When I see big waves, I just get super excited, and I like a kid in the candy store, like a kid at the Christmas tree with all the new presents. So I got to really work on slowing myself down, keep myself in the moment, keep myself focused, and not letting things distract you. Everything is split-second decisions. Everything we're doing out there is real instinct. Where it's instinct, we we work so well together, and we know each other so well, and we know the ocean really well. So it's really second nature for us. But then we have Nicole on the walkie-talkie and we're always reaching out to her to ask her where the big waves are going to come or, or, or she's telling me, hey, the guy's down, go help him. Uh, you know, it's a well-oiled machine. It is a team and, and we have the other walkie-talkie lower down and then we have the safety on the beach and that's how we do so well is because we, we fine-tune it every time we go out. And we, and we don't let the other things distract us. It's like second nature because we've done it so many times. When you're out there on a big wave, you are pretty much alone and you're just enjoying and becoming one with nature. And really before I go into a big day, I, we focus and we, we do our little rituals. And then once we get into the water, we do, we all work on our different um, breathing techniques and attracting what we want and becoming one with nature. And I do these breathing techniques and just reset and focus on what I want and it usually comes and then I just enjoy the moment. Focusing on staying in the moment, enjoying the moment, and, and not having expectations is, is when you never let yourself down. You have to surround yourself with people with positive energy and with the same views and goals as you. Well, it depends on what kind of person you are, what kind of life you want to live. Maybe you want to be some evil villain, so surround yourself with a bunch of bad people and, and you go that way. But for me, I like positive energy, positive people, same view, same goals, and working towards a bigger picture, working towards being more selfless. All aspects of life, there's the positive way and the negative way. I mean, it's a scientific fact. Everything's positive or negative, and you can feel what's good and positive. And in the big picture, there's always a reason, and, and everything always works out. And I mean, it doesn't always for everybody, but it can. It's a matter of keeping the right mindset, making a plan. If you have a plan, then you know what you're working towards. And every second that you waste not focusing on that keeps you farther away from your dream and your, your life purpose. If you're more focused on helping people with your passion, making a better place for the world with whatever you're passionate about, figure out how you can help people with what you do, 
then it, it will never end. It'll always, you always feel good. Putting smiles on people's faces is the best feeling ever. So, I mean, my goal is to just help people smile and help people achieve their goals and dreams. And, um, and when you're doing that, you feel it's so good. I'm just lucky, but I'd like to say that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And so we get prepared as a team. And my goal is to help everybody else live their dreams and accomplish their goals. And I work with each one of the people that I work with and I ask them to write what is their ultimate goal, what is their dream, what, what do they want to do for the rest of their life and put that at the top and then make a map on how to achieve it. Then I know how to help them achieve their goals and dreams through what we do here. And this is just like a place to just create whatever you want for the rest of your life uh, through Nazare, through these giant waves, through this great town, through Portugal, through the support system, through the team. We have the ability to live our dreams. And you can live your dreams no matter where you are and no matter what you're doing. It's best to have a map the goal and the map, and that's how you live your dreams. You know, your gut always knows, but you gotta follow your heart, do what you feel is right, and all of us, when you go to your heart, you know what's right and wrong, and you, your gut tells you, because your sixth sense, and um, I use my gut for my sixth sense and my heart as my guide. As long as you're using those two tools and practicing acceptance, then nothing can go wrong, because it just is. Well, I believe that the head gets in the way. The brain really gets in the way, and we all live in our head, and then we're not in the moment. So if we can get out of our head, get in our heart, and just accept everything, and just enjoy it all, and get off our phones, and look at around the flowers, the, the wow, cool shoes, I mean, all stuff like that is being in the moment. Life gets really challenging when you're in your head and not as enjoyable. Don't look at it as failure. Look at it as an opportunity for learning. Look at it as an opportunity to not do that again. But always get back on the horse. Always go forward. Like I, it's, it's a kind of contradictory. Like, I tell people, don't go where you're afraid, but if you don't go where you're afraid, you won't get over the fear. So it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a hard balancing act of what is right. The world record wave, that day we surfed all day, and then we went over the falls at the end of the day on the jet ski, upside down, and ruined the jet ski, and ruined myself. And if I didn't get back on the horse and go back out with everybody and actually get on the rope, I wouldn't have got that wave. So, yeah, you just keep going. To get past where you're comfortable, you have to push your own personal limits in your whatever you feel are your limits. I definitely believe that everything we experience, we can learn from it. It's an opportunity to learn and to do better or, or not ever do that again. You know? So be more grateful and appreciative. Gratitude is the best attitude. <laughs> Everything's possible. It's never too early, never too late. Figure out what you're passionate about. Write it down. Make a map. Live your dreams. Live your passion.